My favourite aspect is the green spaces. I have lots of favourite parks. I enjoy them through all of the seasons and it's really good for my mental health. I, I think that we are very fortunate if it doesn't take it too much away from the light side, there's there's not statutory funding to manage these spaces. So there's work to be done in terms of protecting them uh, and enhancing them. But that's definitely my favourite. If I and I, I would just add, if there's a second, I live in Morden at the end of the Northern Line, and I really like the cultural diversity. It feels quite vibrant to me. Not quite as vibrant as Tooting. Tooting tops Morden for sure in that regard. But back in 2019, I created and led a successful petition to Merton Council to declare a climate emergency and review its carbon reduction plans. There was a lot of effort put into that to gather enough signatures to make it convincing, but I'm really happy to say that there was unanimous agreement from all of the councillors. And whilst I think it's questionable as to how well the council has done since with the Climate Strategy and Action Plan, what I'm really proud of is that i put it on onto the agenda. And it means that just as equality impact assessments have to be done for all policy making, so too does looking at the effect of, of, of a potential policy on climate action. And if I do say so myself, I think that not being a councillor, but being able to push that body to do that, it's something I'll always be proud of. I think that the planning application is excessive. I think it's insensitive. I don't really buy into the AELTC's argument that to remain a global competitor uh, with these huge tennis tournaments, that they that they have to expand as much as they do and to encroach into Wimbledon Park and indeed to residents' lives in, in that way. And I have to say, environmentally, it doesn't look very sound. The AELTC may be able to marshal evidence which makes it look like a sustainable construction, but once you dig into the detail, the, the, the carbon footprint is huge, to, to put it um, mildly. And I think that in terms of bringing sides together, that's a really difficult one. I, I'm an optimist because I like to think that people will want to negotiate to find a way forward rather than this wrestling match that's been going on for years. But my understanding is that the AELTC are very good at talking up their community engagement. <laughs> but but what I hear and what I what I I mean there, you know there are 18,000 people or so that signed the Save Wimbledon Park petition. What I'm hearing is that people aren't feeling listened to and that any attempt on the part of the community to have a meaningful discussion, maybe to find a compromise. The AELTC are, are not playing ball, to excuse the pun. <laughs> Housing, for sure. We have so many people who are stuck in accommodation that doesn't suit their needs, either because it's too small for the family, or for disabled people, it's it's not fit for purpose, as in, it, as in it's literally dangerous for them to be in that property. For younger people in particular who really want to move out of the family home or want to set down their roots and not pour their money into rent. I mean, my understanding is that 25 to 29 year olds in London, on average, are paying 77% of their wages on housing costs. That is ridiculous. And it wasn't like that when I was starting out. And I, I really feel for people who want to spread their wings, want the independence of having their own place, but they're ending up either in the family home or in shared housing, which isn't all bad, I'll just add, but um, it doesn't seem right in lots of ways. So housing, in short. Well, I've had really good role models in terms of the Green London Assembly members, Sean Berry and Zach Polanski and Caroline Russell. They, it depends on which committee you sit on, but, but basically whichever one you do, you do your research, you create a report which involves scrutinising how the mayors 
that scrutinising the policy making, but also scrutinising crucially the allocation of funding, because the mayor has a budget of over 20 billion. And the reports that, that those three have created, so Zach on retrofitting, uh, Caroline on whether London's ready for the climate emergency, Sean Berry on social housing stock, and also improving active travel infrastructure. I mean, that's just a sample. I would want to be as effective as they are in representing Londoners and, and holding the mayor to account. So it's hard work. Uh, the Greens are a minority, but we are also the third largest group. We've got one more than the Lib Dems. And I think that the, the teamwork that goes on amongst City Hall Greens is brilliant. And, and I'd want to become part of that. Riverside.